I am Dr. Tufik Kishami. I'm a gastroenterologist and I'm a director of the Gastrointestinal Cancer Institute at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Today we're going to be talking about colon cancer, risk factors, some treatment options, and how to prevent it. The colon is a large bowel. It's the part of the gastrointestinal or GI tract that absorbs water and stores waste. The small bowel is where digestion and absorption occurs, and it empties into the colon. At the end of the colon is also known as the rectum, and it connects the colon to the anal canal. Waste material are eliminated from the colon when we have a bowel movement. Cancer that arises in the large bowel is known as colon or rectum cancer. It is the third most common cancer in men and women. Around 150,000 are diagnosed yearly in the United States. Around 50,000 die from the disease every year, which is around 8% of all cancer deaths. Most are diagnosed after the age of 50, and the incidence fortunately is decreasing with time. Except in people under the age of 50, unfortunately the incidence is on the rise. Most colon cancers arise from polyps. In most cases, it takes a polyp over 10 years to turn into cancer. Occasionally, especially in certain genetic disorders, polyps can turn into cancer faster. Let's talk about colon cancer risk factors. Around 4% of colon cancer are due to a known genetic syndrome. Uh, Lynch syndrome would be the more common one, and another syndrome is called uh, FAP. Other risk factors include family history of colon cancer, especially in a first-degree relative. What's also important is that family history of what we call advanced polyps is also a risk factor, especially if it's in first-degree family members. Now, people who've had ulcerative colitis of 8 to 10 years, if it was colitis involving all the colon, or what we call pancolitis, or 15 to 20 years if it was limited or left-sided colitis. Crohn's colitis is also a risk factor in people who've had abdominal radiation, especially as children. Other risk factors include male, African-American, obesity, high consumption of red meat and processed meat, smoking, and excessive alcohol consumption. Now, there are some factors that are protective against colon cancer, and these include physical activity, a diet high in fruit and vegetables, possibly high fiber intake, high vitamin D, and high fish intake. Aspirin and non-steroidals can also decrease the risk for colon cancer, but it's somewhat controversial. Now, how does family history affect this type of cancer? If you look in the general population, the lifetime risk of colon cancer is around 4 to 5%. Having a family history of cancer in a first degree relative doubles that risk. The same applies if you have family history of an advanced polyp or a high-risk polyp. And this is why it's very important to know what type of polyps your family had. Let's talk about the symptoms of colon cancer. First, it's important to know that patients diagnosed with screening have no symptoms. And by definition, screening is when we do a test in someone who does not have symptoms. For those who are symptomatic, symptoms include bleeding from the GI tract, which can be seen as red blood or black tarry stools, change in bowel habits, whether constipation or diarrhea, abdominal pain, feeling of incomplete emptying when you go to have a bowel movement, or thin caliber stool are seen in rectal cancer. Weight loss, iron deficiency, and sometimes colonic obstruction, which presents with bloating and inability to have a bowel movement or pass gas, can be serious symptoms. Now, sometimes signs and symptoms are related to advanced cancer when patients present late. And these symptoms are due to the spread, or also known as metastases. In the United States, around 20% of patients present at an advanced stage. Rectal cancer tends to spread early to the lungs. Colon cancer spreads to the liver, the lungs, or the abdominal cavity, also known as peritoneum. In these situations, symptoms are less specific. For example, right upper abdominal pain, abdominal distension, early satiety, cough, or palpable uh, glands or lymph nodes. Sometimes the presentation is very unusual, like diverticulitis, which is abdominal pain, fever, and localized uh, pain in the abdomen. And sometimes it even responds to antibiotics. Sometimes colon cancer is found incidentally on imaging done for other reasons, when metastases or a colon mass is found on imaging. People who present at an advanced stage tend to have worse outcomes. How is diagnosis done? Diagnosis is often done with a colonoscopy and a biopsy. A biopsy is when we take a small piece of tissue and send it to the lab for analysis. Occasionally, we're presenting at an advanced stage. Diagnosis is done by a biopsy of a metastasis. 
and then patients get a colonoscopy done afterwards. What is a colonoscopy? Colonoscopy is a procedure where a flexible tube that has a camera on the tip and what we call a working channel is used and is inserted through the anus to examine the colon. It is done to identify polyps and remove them with the aim of preventing cancer. It is an invasive test and requires sedation for comfort. And this is why a caregiver needs to be with you on the day of your procedure. There's a small risk in undergoing a colonoscopy and rarely major adverse events can occur. Colonoscopy is the only test that removes polyps and thus prevents cancer. Overall, it decreases the risk of having cancer and detects cancer earlier and decreases the risk of dying from colon cancer. If near obstruction is suspected, then a shorter version of the colonoscopy is done, also known as sigmoidoscopy. And this one can be done without oral cleansing. There are also alternatives to colonoscopy. For example, one is called a virtual colonoscopy, and it's a CT scan of the colon done after oral cleansing. A virtual colonoscopy can visualize polyps and masses. While it can be sometimes an alternative to a colonoscopy when colon cancer is suspected, it does not allow obtaining a biopsy. A certain test called CEA or carcinoembryonic antigen is elevated in colon cancer. However, it's not always elevated and sometimes can be elevated in conditions that are not cancer. And this is why it's not recommended purely for diagnosis. After diagnosis, staging is performed and staging is the process of determining the extent of the cancer. The most common staging system is what is called the TNM staging system. It is a staging system used by the American Joint Committee on Cancer and the Union for International Cancer Control. T determines the tumor characteristics. N determines the number and the location of the lymph nodes involved. And M describes whether distant spread or metastases are present. T, N, and M are combined together to form what we call as the cancer stage. For example, in colon cancer, stage one or two is localized. Once it spreads to the lymph nodes, it becomes stage 3. And distant spread, or metastases, make it stage 4. Now, how is staging performed? Staging includes a physical exam, blood tests, and imaging. Often, a CAT scan or a CT scan is obtained. And that's a series of imaging using x-rays that give you a view of the entire chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Sometimes a PET CT is done. And that's a test that uses radioactive sugar to determine the activity of the tissue. Cancer tends to be very active. Now for rectal cancer, sometimes a pelvic MRI or endoscopic ultrasound is done for what we call as local staging. Localized colon cancer is treated with resection. Sometimes resection is simple, such as during a colonoscopy, a polyp is resected and cancer is found in it. And based on certain characteristics, that could be all what is needed to cure that cancer. Sometimes after a cancer is found in a polyp, surgery is still recommended to remove that part of the colon that had the polyp and to remove surrounding lymph nodes. Surgery can be done as open surgery where a large incision is made, as laparoscopic where small incisions are made, or as robotic surgery where a robot is used to assist in uh, the procedure. Sometimes chemotherapy is given after surgery based on certain characteristics. And sometimes chemotherapy or, or radiation are given before surgery, especially in rectal cancer. Now, once you have stage four or metastatic disease, it is often treated with chemotherapy. And sometimes surgery or ablation or even radiation are used in stage four. Sometimes stage four disease is treated with immunotherapy. Stage four colon cancer can still be cured in certain circumstances. What's the outlook of patients diagnosed with colon cancer? Five-year survival is around 65%, and it's over 90% for localized disease. Overall, the incidence and death related to colon cancer are decreasing, partly due to screening and partly due to better treatment options we have. Let's talk about colon cancer screening. Most colorectal cancers arise in a polyp. Typically, progression from polyp, which also known as adenoma, which is a benign precancerous tissue to cancer, takes around 10 years. And this, what, this is what makes polyps ideal target for screening, as finding them and removing them, such as during colonoscopy, can prevent cancer. 
What is colon cancer screening? Is detecting cancer early before it's causing symptoms. When detected early, it has a better outlook and a higher chance of cure. Colon cancer screening also prevents cancer by removing the precursor, also known as polyp. Colon cancer screening is cost-effective. It's low risk. It starts by assessing the risk of cancer. So your provider will typically take a personal history of cancer, a family history of cancer, especially colon cancer, or family history of polyps. They will ask questions like history of radiation uh, as a child and whether you've had history of colitis. In general, screening starts at the age of 50. But given the rise in cancer at an earlier age, some societies now are recommending starting screening at the age of 45. For African Americans, it is recommended that we start screening at the age of 45. Screening is recommended earlier for people with family history of cancer or certain genetic predispositions. Multiple tests are available to screen for colon cancer, and the best test done is the one that's acceptable to the patient. All tests other than screening colonoscopy are screening tests, meaning they detect cancer and polyps, but they do not remove polyps, and this is why a colonoscopy is recommended if you have an abnormal test to remove the polyps and prevent cancer. After your colonoscopy, if polyps are removed, they are sent to the pathology lab for examination. It's important to know what your polyps showed because that determines when you need the colonoscopy again. If you had no polyps and you have no family history of colon cancer, we typically recommend a repeat colonoscopy 10 years later. Here's what to expect when you're having a screening colonoscopy. First, you have to have the colon very clean so polyps are not missed. To clean the colon, you take an oral prep. It's a balanced electrolyte solution that will flush out the system and help you have a clean colon. Here's an example of a bad prep and here's an example of a good prep. And you can see that a subtle polyp like the one you're seeing can be missed if the prep is bad. There are other options than colonoscopy. For example, a fit test, is a stool test that is done yearly. It tests for occult blood in the stool. And if positive, a colonoscopy is needed. It's very good at detecting cancers, but detects less polyps than a colonoscopy. Some of the advantages is that it's inexpensive. However, a major disadvantage is that it needs to be done every year. Another stool test tests the DNA and the blood. It's a test that is done every three years. And again, if positive, a colonoscopy will be needed. This test is good at detecting both cancers and polyps, and it's better than fit test at detecting polyps. However, it is expensive, and it does have a, what we call a false positive rate, meaning many people who test positive end up having no significant abnormalities, which can cause some anxiety for people. A virtual colonoscopy is when a CT scan is done instead of the colonoscopy. It still requires an oral preparation, and if positive, then a colonoscopy will be needed. It is good at detecting cancer and polyps that are larger than 5 millimeters. Some of the disadvantages is that it's expensive and it needs to be repeated every five years. And another major limitation is there are multiple findings that are not significant that are found on these CT scans, which can lead to unnecessary investigations and cause anxiety. It also involves radiation. The best test that is done to screen for colon cancer is the test that's acceptable to you. You need to be well informed and know about all your options uh, and choose what works for you. It's very important to follow up on abnormal tests and get a colonoscopy. It's also very important to know your family history of cancer and polyps. It is very important not to ignore symptoms such as bleeding, even if you're young or if you've had a previously negative colonoscopy. The top three things you can do to avoid colon cancer. One is get your screening done. Screening is recommended for everyone, especially if you don't have any symptoms. Lifestyle modifications include a healthy lifestyle, a diet high in fruits and vegetables, and avoiding large amounts of red and processed meats. And three is know your family history. People who have family history of colon cancer might need screening earlier and might need screening more often. Thank you for taking the time to learn about colon cancer and for giving us the opportunity to educate you on colon cancer, its treatment, and how to prevent it. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer, and while treatable, it is also preventable by undergoing proper screening. 
For more information, please go to cancercenter.com.